Welcome to You Name It, the special, special, it's not really a special edition. It's just an edition of You Name It. What's up, Jerry? Hola. <laughs> Hola, Davin. <laughs> I wonder if people wonder why you say, I, I kind of wonder myself why you say it's, hola I to me. I said that for some reason. I think we were making fun of Mexicans or something. I can't hear you. Are you like far away from your microphone? No. Let me make sure my volume's up. Everything's working. Something's different with my. It might be my phone cord. Hang on, let me unconnect and reconnect and make sure I'm in the right ears and all that stuff. All that technical stuff. Yeah, once stuff, again, Jerry. here we go. We are professional audiovisual technicians. God forbid we should have to do this on speakerphone. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, you could have heard me through the whole recording too. So, but. I think I had my uh, earbuds in wrong. Because <laughs> I'm a technician. Yeah, you're very good at whatever that is you do. I got home today and I had no internet service for some reason. Well, that's lovely. So I was afraid that we wouldn't be able to do... I mean, we could do the show, but I was afraid that we wouldn't be able to upload the show. Right. And then I remembered something. I have 4G internet in my car. Oh. I could hook up to my car and I could upload the the show. <laughs> and use up every bit of your data for the month. <laughs> yep. Use the whole three gigs. So how are you liking your Actually, new car now, by the way? I love that new car. It's it's not as luxurious as Lisa's Ford car. Right. The Edge. But it's uh, obviously a million times better than a 1998 Windstar. <laughs> so, <laughs> Postal van. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really great. I mean, uh, I've I've gotten used to it because the ride itself is, uh, you know, the the more expensive car obviously can have a better ride. Oh, I but, never uh, asked you what and, and did, what did you get for the postal van? Did you trade it in? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, I was our landlord guy decided that he was interested in it as a work vehicle for the, his maintenance man. Okay, and. Then he, of course, took it to the uh, transmission guy to check it out. Yeah. And then he came back to me with, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, he gives me the whole story, the whole spiel about how horrible it is, right? Right. But I'm on to him because he's a salesman type anyway. Right. He's trying to bring so the price down. I already know down. he's going to, yeah, he's just trying to do that. So I was supposed to take him and his wife and, and Lisa and I were supposed to take them out to dinner at like Fleming Steakhouse. Okay. That kind of a thing. Which will cost you about two hundred bucks at least. Okay. You know, with four people probably cost two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars if you do it right. Yeah, unless you get a gift and, card and uh, use hotel points. Yeah, or get your American Express forty percent off coupon. Yeah. That I get every once in a while. Uh but anyway, uh, I just decided to trick him and said, I'll tell you what, you can have that van if you take us out to Fleming's. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, instead of him talking me down to about $200 for the thing, then um, we're going to go out and have much more. Gonna... Someone just snuck in to my studio. Oh, no. And just blew me in the face with the leaf blower. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sitting. Anyway, I'm I think, sitting in my I think garage I made out well. on the deal. Your studio. I like how you call it the studio. It's your garage, Jerry. It is my garage, and the noise you probably hear is the air conditioner that we have in the garage that feeds Lindsay's room upstairs. Oh, nice. I've got a fan going in my garage, my man cave. <clears throat> and uh, oh yeah, I forgot to say this. I'm sorry. I know you got a fan going. I hear that, but there was something we were supposed to do at the beginning of the show. Okay. Stop with the phone vibrations. It hasn't gone off, fucker. And I've got it on vibrate. It hasn't gone out yet. <laughs> but I, w I remember I was supposed to tell you at the beginning of the show to not have your phone on vibrate. Oh, to remind me? Mm-hmm. Is yours on vibrate? Because last week... Mine is. Last week you yelled at me and then you announced that you were turning it off. I know. I'm a dick that way. You are. You are up. But mine never went off because I don't have any friends. Yours goes off constantly because people like uh, Wonder Years Paul yeah, and, will call you. And, and that uh, what, what was else. that millionaire show where you could phone a friend? You would be my phone a friend on, on that show. That's the only time Jerry would get a phone call from anybody. Would be when <laughs> it, it was a phone a friend guy. 
and they had a question yeah. about something irrelevant in life. Jerry, exactly something that no one else would know or care about, but Jerry would know the answer. Yeah, like uh, I have a question, Jerry. What is? What are the ingredients to suck a tash? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Be like. Yep, that's lima beans and corn, Davin. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jerry, for that's, sharing. Uh, my fi- my final answer, beans and corn. <laughs> lima beans and corn. Damn it, you lost. <laughs> oh, that was choice B. All right, where was I? Where were we? We bo- we all have background noise. We're doing a show now. Yep. All right, everybody. We're just, the show is going to start now. Uh, <laughs> do you have any topics you'd like to start with? Um, oh, well, let me tell you, um, 4th of July, I did exactly what, what I said I was going to do. I just kind of hung out and drank and chilled out, built a shed, didn't go anywhere because <laughs> yeah. my daughter couldn't get off work. So I was waiting for that part too. I told you to do nothing but watch like Gilligan's Island reruns on TV and hang around and drink and play darts and just hang out by yourself. And you were, yeah, you saying that you did that. But I heard you sneak in there, built a shed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I got bored. <laughs> so. so you weren't being very truthful about it. Well, I, was, I had five days off, so I had to do something. And Just like you weren't truthful with me yesterday either oh, when I talked to you on the phone. When was this? Yesterday when we decided that we weren't doing the show yesterday. Oh, why wasn't I truthful? What did I not tell you, Jerry? Because you said you were at a wine tasting. You didn't say you were on another blind date. <laughs> oh, you. You're getting me in trouble. So now I need, now everybody here, and everybody listening now needs to know how your blind date went. It actually went pretty good. It was a happy hour date. Nothing, nothing weird? Nothing weird with this one. No, this was my first match date, and I've been a match for probably, fuck, shit, they renewed it a while back, but... Yeah, this is my first yeah. actual match date. It was she was nice. She was a chemist at Pfizer. A chemist? Yeah. Huh. We used to do A V work at Pfizer. Yeah, they shut down that Ann Arbor location. So Yeah, didn't you like didn't you, you go out there and build video walls before? Like the old fashioned T V tube oh, video walls? Oh yeah, the cube wall. But see the thing yeah. is we went to this wine bar. We met at this wine bar for happy hour, so appetizers are a half off. Uh wine by the glass is all half off yeah and this place was one of those wants to be fancy places and the right. food fucking sucked it's well, let me ask you this did you pick the location for this date no i did not okay good because i was going to say you don't start off with half priced appetizers and half priced drinks that shows that you're a cheapskate yeah let her know that you are a cheapskate davin when she, when the when the relationship progresses and i'm only saying that because there is an episode of the show titled cheapskate Gavin. <laughs> yes i am a, i'm like i said cash in your hotel points for your fleming's gift card that's me that's what i would do Christmas what was that show called? Is it called Christmas with Cheapskate Dad? Pro- probably. <laughs> I give all my little tips for being cheap. But here's the thing I did not like. The restaurant was uh, Vinoteca in Royal Oak. Okay. Not to be confused with the Vinoteca in Washington, D.C., which is phenomenal. But spelled okay. differently. One less. Royal Oak, Michigan, right? Right. And the other one's in D.C., but it's got one less C in it. So they're kind of copying bunch of assholes uh, anyway this is downtown exactly. downtown royal oak um we're all i don't frequent downtown royal oak even though i live here because it's all douchebags <laughs> and uh thursdays thursdays it's they have bike night but it's all the chopper bikes and the the detroit bike gangs that come up and kind of park on the street and now they freaking downtown they made a goddamn bike lane it was two lanes and they had to put in a fucking bike lane a bike lane. Oh, in the street? Yeah, so they cut down two lanes going through downtown Royal Oak to now one lane, so now traffic is fucking ridiculous. And they put those goddamn crosswalk things that you have to stop if a pedestrian's in the crosswalk. The flashy ones? No, just a little, you know, barricade thing in the street, fluorescent shit. And these fuckers don't look. They just walk right out now. They don't even, you know, attempt because they have the right of way. Fuck them. 
<laughs> that's my rant. Anyway, but this uh, the, they <laughs> they have those in uh, Milwaukee, and I'll miss those These? because I won't be on the road anymore. The, I'm starting to be the on the road misser, even though it hasn't even started for anyone yeah, yet. Yeah, you you're craving being out of town. Well, oh. you get used to it, and it's uh, and it's part of your life, and then it goes away. So yeah, speaking of, I just uh, found out uh, one of our people. Uh, the big boss, Jason, mm-hmm. he was talking around the desk about hotel points and stuff. Okay, well, we'll pump the brakes. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is fine because uh, we always deal with hotel points and stuff. So I, I told him all about um, how to roll over those points to match, you know, do the whole status match routine between the brands and stuff. Yeah. So um, someone's texting me. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Jerry. Dave, Turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Shelton. I was going to read it because your name was in it, mm. but I can wait for a second. Anyway. No, go ahead and read so it. So Jason was doing that, and then he just brought, Then he just slammed it down and goes, uh, I'm, I'm gold. He's gold with Marriott. Okay. And he's like, that's because we only stayed two or three days. And I'm thinking, you're right. I have no more fantastic hotel shit going on. <laughs> I'll be going out for like two or three days. I'll be lucky to be blue. Oh. <laughs> with I'm, any of these places. I'm like 300,000 <laughs> points. I've got enough stays. 300,000 points away from being platinum for life with Marriott. Ah, man. Well, this is what you do. You make platinum for life, and then you switch to a desk job, and you don't have to worry about oh, anything anymore. Ever again. No, I'm not switching to a desk job anytime soon. Although you do get but the air really conditioning. N- yeah, I get that, and it's kind of chilly up there right now. I hear it's warm in the summer, too. I mean, the wintertime, it's too hot, and in the summertime, it's too cold. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the platinum for life would be nice, but if we really think about it, you're not going to get much out of that because they rarely upgrade your room anymore anyway. Well, it gives you, I think it gives you the lifetime status on their screen, and there's only it's the top 3% of everyone that stays in a Marriott. Yeah, um, but what do they give you? They don't give you any. They're not going to give you the upgrade. They're going to give you free internet. They're going to give you a breakfast. Well, I get all that and, stuff, but uh, I'm expecting them to bend but, over backwards. Because if they don't, I'm going to point out that I'm platinum for life. With my you should, every with time. my twenty dollar bill and <laughs> <laughs> with your tip, <laughs> exactly. I'd like a nice room. But really, the, I'm the platinum value for life is with the, this twenty, right? The value is the points that you get from the stays. Yeah. And you like them because you can buy a frickin' brand new car with your points. And I like them because we can go on little vacations and never have to pay for a hotel. Yeah. So now i got to pay for everything. So it won't be as much fun going on vacation when it's coming out of your pocket. Exactly. Well, <laughs> what, what I don't like is um, Hyatt. You can't cash them in for gift cards or anything other than Hyatt hotel stay or like a Hyatt gift card. Yeah. Whereas all the other ones you can convert to actual merchandise and gift cards and dining cards and even like amusement park tickets, that type of stuff. Hey, can you transfer those points to another brand? I have to look into that because Hyatt's kind of... Sometimes Hyatt's are usually they're friends assholes. and they can do it. Yeah. So I'll... Speaking you, of friends... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm I was going to say... I'll just keep those in, like, for instance, my ex-wife's taking the kids on vacation, and she, they're driving out to Maine, so they're going to need a hotel on the way out and on the way back. So I'll give her, I'll book the room and give them a free hotel room and use it up somehow. That's very nice of you. Okay, so what were you going to say, fucker? Oh, I was going to say, speaking of friends, I want a friend whose nickname is Fart. Okay. I think that'd be fun. Nickname is not much to it, right? It's just that. Can you imagine if you had a a friend whose nickname was Fart? So just so you can go into a party and go, "What's up, Fart? (laughs) How you doing, Fart?" Yeah, I mean, Fart. Don't worry, (laughs) Fart will drive you home. (laughs) I had uh, or oh, yeast infection. How about a friend with a nickname Yeast Infection? That'd be a good one. A friend who's what? Whose nickname is Yeast Infection. That's a long nickname, but I get you. Yeah. That'd be a fun one. But then you'd have to create a nickname out of his nickname. Uh, like, it would be Yeast Infection, but then you'd make, hey, Yeasty. Yeah. Or Gout Leg. <laughs> Bread Boy. <laughs> 
Fart. I wrote that down on Friday when I was drunk that I wanted a friend whose nickname is Fart. Well, if you or Saturday. if you want to nickname me Fart, you can nickname me Fart, Jerry. <laughs> I don't want to call you Fart. That'd be something more like a peppy thing. Huh. But he's already got a nickname. Yeah. Uh, and you know what the line above that is? What? I'll read this show note to you. The one above that is, Ever have to fart and then leave the room to do it, but the fart goes back up and hides in your body. Oh, yeah. Follows you around. It sticks with your clothes. And <laughs> oh. No, not that one. No. No. Like, you, like you're sitting in a group full of people. Okay. And say it's morning time. You're drinking. Say, say something like this. It's morning time. You're drinking coffee on your back porch and your family's out there with you, talking with you. And being nice on a nice Saturday morning okay. last Saturday okay and then you and then you have to fart so you leave the room and you walk all the way into the house and then into your bedroom area where nobody can hear you mm-hmm. and the fart has now the fart has now gone back up into your body and hides and you can't get it back now okay and then you walk back out sit down and start drinking your coffee again and the fart comes back and wants to come out okay and then you get up again walk back into your bedroom and the fart has hidden back up in your body <laughs> that's never happened to you it, that does happen yes <laughs> exactly so i thought that i'd share that with the entire audience that this fictional story that didn't ever happen to me on saturday last week i'm sure people can relate to that well you announced to me that you didn't poop you haven't pooped in three days what the fuck is up with that jerry i don't know i guess it's just uh Changes in diet, maybe. It's because you're in carpet land now, sucking in all that cold air. No, it's probably. It's, I'm sure it's because I had my prescriptions finally refilled by the doctor, and it affected my digestive tract. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about Jerry's bowels some more. <laughs> bowels, bowels, bowel is like bowl, and bowling is like Ryan Wilson. Oh, yeah. hi, Ryan Wilson. I'm sure you don't listen to the show, but I had a visit. For all of you fans that used to listen in the Ryan days, I went and visited Ryan yesterday. And how did that go? Is he Ryan has consolidated his business down to one shop in uh, the Woodland Lanes in Livonia, Michigan, on Plymouth Road, that everybody should go check out if you're into bowling stuff and okay. trophies and junk. So the one that was and, uh, the one that was a freestanding by itself, not attached to a bowling alley, he shut down. Yeah. Now every time someone go could picture a podcast in a bowling alley, it would have been right. Okay. It would have been at a bowling alley, but uh, anyway, Ryan's doing very well. He's uh, more profitable because everybody knows that he was. Uh, anybody listen to any of those episodes, he will not hesitate to tell you that he was going broke. He, he was <laughs> so fucking miserable. Was he in a better mood? Right. Was he happier? <laughs> I'd tell you this much: he smiled a whole lot. Well, that's a good and sign. Good for you, Ryan. Man. Cracked jokes. Yeah, my good friend Ryan. Right, the real. It was Ryan's nice. To, it was nice to visit. I haven't seen him for a long time because. Uh, of the whole new job and it's just it, there, no longer am I the freelancer who has four days off a week right, did, and can go waste them hanging out with Ryan at the bowling shop. Did, did the uh, <laughs> podcast come up at all? Nope. I don't think he listens. I don't think he cares. No. He's uh, he's moved on with part his of the life. reason he, that he dropped off of it anyways because he lost interest. Other things in his life were going on and, and no, I don't think he really I don't think he liked it as much as everybody liked hearing him complain. Yeah. So. Well, plus you guys were the Ryan. Went back when he was doing it, you guys weren't really super consistent on it being out there every week, and I think I kind of push you for that a little bit. Yeah, I think it works now that we're dragging down some big numbers. Every and all the people are enjoying it. Yep, you were giving me some stats today, and I was pretty impressed. We're, we're moving up that food chain. Eventually, we'll get real sponsors, hopefully. We keep saying that. I know. We're probably jinxing ourselves. You know what? Not one day. Fuck the sponsors. <laughs> one, one day, we'll make hundreds of dollars <laughs> off of this show. You never know. Well, once it picks up, uh, all you have to do is get in the right college. We should hashtag a bunch of college names on this show and see if we can get I, into the people who actually listen to podcasts. Yeah, I don't know about colleges, though. We're not cool enough for that. No, we probably got to wait until kids are actually going and registering for school in their first week and then do an episode just about colleges, football or whatever. College life. Yep. 
is if we can relate. See, that's the problem. You never. Went I'm to just college. an old asshole that has no life, and you are an old asshole that has a life. <laughs> uh, well, you can you can relate because you do collegey type things. You told us about it that you joined the left-handed drinking club yep. and all kinds of shit like that. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm still a kid. I stopped maturing probably around oh, 23, 13? maybe 22. I think that's 22. Yeah. I'm almost like kind of like Corey. I'm like that's how old I feel, but I can't do the <laughs> shit he does anymore. No, I can't do any of that. Are you kidding? You can't go on a full super drinking weekend, which I'm going to do. Starting tomorrow, starting today, show day today, Friday, mm-hmm. I will be I will be doing the golf weekend, which is seriously. You start drinking six o'clock on Friday night, and you don't stop till midnight on Saturday. Oh, and and it's uh, because you when you have to get up at six thirty in the morning to go to the golf course. By the time it hits seven thirty or eight, your hangover from the night over the night before is so bad that you have to do the shots of Jack Daniels to get yourself Back, to where you can yep. survive the day. But then that begins the tumble down the hill. When does the headache <laughs> actually hit is my question. Well, the headache will hit um, Sunday morning on the drive home. And that's the worst. That's when you got to make Lisa drive. Lisa will never drive the car. I have to drive the whole time. Well... Plus, she keeps coming out here. It's like she wants to be on the show. You know what, Jerry? The headache would... I was in your car today. Yes. Lisa, you can hear her talking. Lisa again. in the background, yep. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't hear what she was saying, but she can tell from what I'm saying, what you're going to tell me is that you, you went in the car today and you really appreciated the air freshener. Oh, my God. Jerry, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> Your tip, tip for the public, never buy a uh, new car smell air freshener, ever. The Febreze, yeah. Lisa says it smells like ass. Well, yeah. it's also mixed with what other two air fresheners do you have in there? Oh, I had, um, let's see, I had the cherry one under the seat from the car wash at the same time, and also I had the one that you nicknamed Baltimore Pimp. That was no, hanging no Pittsburgh me. Pimp. I can't hear you. It was a, I it was a Pittsburgh on. pimp. She's flipping me off and keeps saying stuff. Uh, I did. It wasn't Baltimore pimp. It was Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh pimp. Pittsburgh pimp. Yeah. It. I it's it. like I'm you're sorry. trying to make a fucking pina colada in your car or something. You got some kind of <laughs> fucking black ice, um, pine that scent was, going. Yeah, that's the Pittsburgh pimp. It's the black ice pine one. Oh, and then you got the new car scent, and then you got cherry. What the fuck? You don't need new don't car know, smell, them, Jerry. You bought a new car. I took them all out. <laughs> right. Here we go. I know where you're going with that. Hey, stupid, you're riding in a new car. Why are you buying a new car smell? Exactly. It's... That's because I'm stupid. I can't help it. And what does new car smell smell like? Glue and fucking carpet fiber. That's all it smells I don't know what the Febreze car freshener company thinks new cars smell like, but it doesn't smell like whatever that was. Oh, that smelled like ass. You tried giving it away. It smelled away. like a, a perfumed dead cat. <laughs> <laughs> it was evil. God. It was. It was terrible. But now I've replaced them all with your basic citrus from the Febreze company. I'm giving them another shot. Okay. Well, I use the Febreze, the um, the linen, and that yeah, smells fresh linen. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we did have a little discussion about that. It's probably because you and I spent so many years in hotels, and that's what they use yeah. for their hotel fresheners. Well, I'll, fresh linen. I'll smoke. buy those for my rental cars. Because, like, when I'm in Texas for 40-something days, I'm, yeah, I'm going to smoke in the rental car. Yep. And then I'm going to pay to get we, it detailed uh, we know that before from, I return it. And we know that from get, It's Getting Hot in Texas. That's an episode that uh, we'll tell you all about. It. See, I'm doing the shout-outs for the other episodes so, so people, people know where to go them. to listen. Yeah, I know what you're doing, <laughs> yeah. Jerry. You're being sly. <laughs> so, yeah, fresh linen. I don't know. This. Uh, I'm not sure if this... This show is going is being that exciting. Let me try and spruce it up uh, with another one of my drunken show notes. Are you ready? Okay, let's go for it. Dogs can't hear music because you never see them dance by themselves. Okay. First of all, Jerry, do- yeah. dogs don't dance. 
Sure they do. No, they don't. Well, it's where I'm thinking about this, because my daughter had the dog and was holding onto its arms and making the dog dance. Okay. You were drunk. And it struck me. Yeah, I've never seen a dog dance, so obviously they can't hear music. Just like, you know how dogs can't, some dogs can't see the TV. You could like point at it and touch it and right. tell them it's there. And they, it's like it doesn't exist to them. Science. Yeah, it's <laughs> like that. They don't hear music like that. They must not hear the rhythm so that, because they wouldn't, you would expect if they liked the song, they would kind of dance around a little bit. Yeah. Dogs listen to different types of music than we do, though. I don't sound that smart today, do I? No, I'm pretty sure that dogs listen to like something that we don't listen to. You know, like they like other dogs. Yeah, or the sound of squirrel squirrels or chipmunks or mm-hmm. even some low, they low also, flying birds. You know how they say dogs have like this incredible sense of smell, right? Yeah, I think there's something going on with that too. Okay, because there's a real. So you've had dogs in your life as pets. I know that. Yeah, um, and. If they had this ultra-powerful sense of smell, Mm -hmm. why in the world would they jam their nose down into your ass crack whenever you let a fart when you're sitting in the chair watching TV? Well, Bill told us today. Dogs... Bill didn't tell us anything about the dogs, did he? What did he He say? He said dogs sweat out of their nose and out of their ass. That was the Billism today. So, therefore, it's acceptable in dog life for them to sniff butts. So they must think you sweat out of your ass because that's your pheromones or whatever coming out. Why am I sounding like this goddamn know. smart one and you're sounding I like a know. moron? I don't know. It's confusing me because the other part of it is that you're not talking about the same thing as I'm talking about. I'm talking about that's your good old-fashioned fart. I don't care about your and topics. The, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog puts his face right up there with his ultra-powerful nose. So I'm saying that it's not as sensitive no, it probably as they isn't. think can't be they can sniff out truffles but they're just not afraid see they're not afraid of the they want to smell the fart yeah they get their face in there and they're not repulsed by it it's like oh hey whatever you just made a noise and there's all this stink hanging around but it's not bothering me one bit because i don't really have that kind of sense of smell i can't hear music and i can't smell farts so dogs can't hear music because they don't dance okay that's logical I'll, yeah, right. I'll buy into that one. <laughs> yeah, right. You got a better topic than dogs can't <laughs> smell farts or hear music? Well, I got... We uh, joined the lottery pool today. We did, yes. The Michigan Mega Millions, which is a multi-state, it's I think, isn't 44 it? 44 states. Yeah, so that's up to a gazillion dollars. And I was looking at some of the rules on that, and, oh, God, the odds of winning are, are tremendous. Yeah, against but you. somebody's got to win. But somebody's got to yeah. win. Um, but yeah, it's five hundred and forty million. So Bill went around today collecting ten dollars per person. We got two hundred and fifty tickets. So, do we got two hundred and fifty tickets? Right. We had twenty five people are in it, and then Bill sends out this email with the rules. <laughs> And evidently, yeah, I saw his his. He decided how we had to do it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, if we win, guys, we have to take the lump sum option, and then we'll pay all the taxes, and then we'll evenly distribute it amongst ourselves. I don't think he knows how it works. I'm going to say Bill doesn't know how that works right. because what happens when you're in a lottery pool? Then the the lottery commission goes, "Oh, you're in a lottery pool." So individually, what would you like to do with your share of the total right. is what they're going to say. They're going to say, do you want the cash option or do you want the this or that? And then they're going to tax out. everybody anyway. Right. There is no way to pay the taxes and then divvy it up. Everybody pays their own income taxes. Right. So, so Bill is a very wise man at times, mm-hmm. but not this time. Sorry, Bill Christensen spelled correctly. <laughs> So here's the problem with the, this whole lottery thing. Mm-hmm. When people at work come around and they ask you for money for the lottery pool, you really think, you know what? I bought my own. I bought 40 tickets of my own. Do I really want to spend another 10 bucks on the lottery? But then you start thinking, what if all my coworkers go in this lottery pool and I don't? And now I'm the only fucking asshole working here and doing all their jobs, and they're out partying on yachts and private jets and all that other shit, 
and I'm out doing <laughs> setting up a monitor on a cart at somebody's <laughs> graduation, you know. As if that's what you do. <laughs> that's just what people think you do. It's not what you do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I get I get that too. You wouldn't want it. You you're forced into doing it because you don't want to be that one lone asshole who said no. It's broke. Yeah. Yeah. And then regrets it well, later. Everybody else is well, everybody else is having a great time. Spe- like there'll be one person that you never really liked at work who'll have way more money than you and you just feel like shit. Well that's just like at Speedway today. I uh stopped to get my lottery tickets, my personal ones. And I, Speedway, 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 lottery tickets now. Speedway, Speedway, the floor is always sticky. Speedway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's our speed. That's our Speedway song. You just hit, <laughs> you you sing it and then add whatever happens at Speedway. It's the closest gas station to our office, so we're constantly going right. up there for those big drinks and stuff like that. Anyway, um, yes, especially in the warehouse because it was like eighty six degrees at maybe one o'clock this afternoon. You make uh, six trips to Speedway just to enjoy the air conditioning. Exactly. So you can get in your hot car, get the air conditioning going for a minute, and then, yeah. But You uh, can go right to Speedway, 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 stop parking on the side. Speedway, Speedway, get in the freaking right lane to get in. Don't cut me off, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they uh, when the guy printed the tickets, they were switching cashiers. So when I asked for my two tickets... She printed them. He took over the transaction, and he printed them. So now yep. he went to take back the two tickets, two extra tickets they printed. And I said, ah, uh, oh, the extra ticket quandary. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Give me those. Sell me those. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll sell them to the next customer. And I'm like, uh, no, because if those are the winners, I would be pissed. Exactly. But that's I was gonna say I was gonna say the paradox of the extra tickets. But, I, but it is no paradox. You can't you can't allow them to give it to somebody else because those are your winning well, tickets. It's brilliant now. on their part, because if they need to bump up their lottery sales, print out extras when a customer asks for two, print out four. They'll buy them. I will, every time. Ninety yep. percent of the time I bet they'd buy them, and if they don't buy them, you sell them to the next person as if you just printed them off. Yeah, and you know how bad you would feel if you found out that the lottery was won and then they always tell you where the ticket was sold. Yeah. And if the ticket was sold at that place, you would just be crushed the rest of your entire life. Uh-huh. You would be in a Ryan Wilson depression. That's true. That's what would happen. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be like a crazy old man burying his fucking stash of gold and money in his backyard. All yeah, some hanging crazy out his, old dude. Hanging out in his garage all day, never fucking going anywhere, right. doing anything, just sitting in the garage. Burying all of his... All of his wealth <laughs> inside of a, a PVC pipe yeah. with capped ends. And making treasure I don't know maps. Who that, I don't know who that would be. Yeah, making treasure maps for for your relatives to find it when he, when you're gone. You know. <laughs> now they're going to think that it's one of us, yeah. and both of our backyards are going to get dug up. <laughs> People are going to be walking around with those metal detector things. Yep. Let's see. Lottery. What are you going to do with your share when you win? Uh, tomorrow, today. I'm going to call in Rich. I'm not calling in sick. Thing? I'm not going to quit. I'm calling in Rich. Would you... Well, all right, let's say you got 25 people. 25 divided by 500 million. Yep. And then you got to take... Let's if you see. take half of that, because you're taking the cash option. Yeah, divided by it, two. Yeah, and then you take... Is then you, 250. Right, and then you take out now the let's taxes. Say, another oh, 100 and something. Uh, 250 million. I got this. I got yeah. two... I have less zeros than I need. But let's let's just knock that right down to about uh, 125 or 130 because... 130, one, two, three, four, five, six. Because of the taxes you'll have to pay. Right. And then we'll divide that by 25. So you get about 5 million bucks, right? That's what I figured. 5 million. All right. So let's say you get the 5 million. Would you quit your job? Um, you know what? 5 million? I might not. I would... Uh, yep. I might tell people what I think and get fired eventually, but... <laughs> now, I was thinking the other day, and I thought around 2 million, I would still have to work. 
maybe anything above two million bucks, you could get away with not working yeah. again. Well, keep in mind, but I've got kids and an ex-wife, so the ex-wife would be really yeah. pissed, but the kids would be thinking that, you know, Martians have freaking landed and are taking them to heaven or something. Because <laughs> like, oh, heaven Martians, dad's got money, yeah. woo! Yeah, but I, I just thought, think about that though. You, you win. Let's say you win the scratch off ticket for a million bucks. Okay. You can't quit your job. Everybody thinks that that million, million bucks is a lot of money yeah, these days. It's not a That's lot. not going to last you. You know, just like if you want to be middle class, you're going to end up spending a hundred thousand dollars a year. So, what do you got? Ten years full of that? That's no retirement package. Well, let's put it this you way, gotta, Jerry. You I got to keep working. I would like to have that problem. You know. No, I would too, but I'm just being realistic. You'd have to keep working. You know, you might get all excited because you won two million bucks, but then you really got to keep working. Yeah, I take Otherwise, a lot more. Just vaca- put that away. I take a lot more vacation days, and they'd be a lot more fun than hanging out and building a shed, and drinking in my garage. Because <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, building a shed. <laughs> but yeah, that's the tip of the day, folks. If you win less than, let's just name it, two point five million dollars. If you take home. Less than two point five million dollars. Just keep working. You'll you'll thank me when you're eighty because you won't be eating cat food then because you stopped working and spent all your money. And they're all shaking their heads just like my kids do when I give them the parental wisdom of the wayback right. machine. You know, the wayback machine. The parental of- wisdom, like don't no you can't no you can't afford a brand new Jeep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant on her part. It's like, my, right, my daughter. For the listeners, my daughter comes up to me and goes, Hey, Dad, what if, since I'm working now, what if you co-sign a lease for me for a brand new Jeep and we could trade in the Honda? So there's nothing <laughs> wrong with the Honda. She's like, well, the exhaust system, it's, it's making noise. It's got a hole in the muffler. I'm like, okay, a muffler's maybe 200 bucks, 250 bucks to get the thing fixed. You're not paying your insurance now. I'm paying the insurance. The car's paid for. I gave it to you. And now you want to take on a lease payment. Okay. Well, Peppy just bought a Jeep. Let's look at the numbers. So we started looking at the numbers and like, okay, Lauren. So if you give me $500 a month while you're working, I'll save that for you. And we'll discuss maybe leasing you something in the fall. If you can keep up with the payments. Yep. She didn't want any part of that. No. No, that's because they have this weird image that, oh, you know, you can get a brand new car for like $100 a month, and that's where it stops. Yeah, they don't don't think think about about insurance, insurance. maintenance, any of that shit. Yeah. And it doesn't work that way, kids. Gee, in the fall when you go back to school and you don't have a job and can't work, you know, 30-something hours a week, who's going to make the car payment? I know who. Daddy Warbucks. Daddy Warbucks, yep, because... I. My ex has has the kids convinced that I'm loaded somehow, <laughs> that I have money. Yeah. Yeah. Because you win the lottery. If I win the lottery, sh- oh, fuck. You know what you don't do when you when you become rich from the lottery? I'll tell you another thing you don't do. What's that? You don't fly on a private jet anywhere. Okay, why? Because you die. Oh, that's true. Plane crashes always happen with people in a private jet definitely don't learn how to fly a, a plane yourself yeah, and don't don't be in like a, a rock band and learn how to play guitar and then fly a private jet yeah don't do any of that either that's number one number two is don't fly your own don't be a rich guy who owns a plane and he flies himself because yeah. then you die Fuck that. and then don't be on a plane with a rich guy who's flying it Bo- so just fly first class and domestic. You're not gonna you're not gonna crash and die. And don't buy a yacht, rent one. Yeah, you don't need that giant boat. What are you gonna do with that every day? Just just get one for the day you want to be on a boat. I honestly think I would still live in the same house I lived in if I was a millionaire. I think I would too. I, I would just I'd you have, know fix it up. I'd have a newer car, you know. Yep. I'd pay people. I would people. not have an expensive, stupid car. I would have a, a GM or a Ford vehicle. Yeah, I'd probably get a Cadillac, my dream, one of my dream cars. But I'd get the V if I was a millionaire. But I would, get the uh, what? I would actually pay for people to work on my house rather than me doing it. That would be the I benefit. I would, too. 
And Lisa wouldn't like it. Because I would then, if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't be doing anything. It would always be a maintenance guy. Or it would be like a, one of our relatives who's handy, and I would pay them to come over and do it. Yeah. Just so they'd have the extra cash. But why would you ever want to physically do any gardening or Fuck. lawn mowing yeah, that's, or any of that shit? Well, unless it gives you peace, you know? Because, like, if, this, yeah. this whole garage... I guess if you're the zen type. Well, yeah. like, this whole garage project, Bob has really gotten into the sanding. It's, like, his his release from all the stress at work and everything. So he sands the, the wood and... I, I stain it and we put it up and all that other shit. So we've been working on the garage project all summer and we're getting ready for the last wall. But I think <laughs> if something gives you peace and like like cooking makes me happy, just sitting right. You know, it's funny about the Bob thing is that Bob's got a stressful position. Yeah. And I think it's hilarious that he's into the sanding because sanding is mildly destructive. <laughs> so yeah, well, you know, we still joke taking about out, the fact like, mildly taking out the aggressions. We yeah. still joke about the fact that once the garage is finished, he's going to kill me off and take the house. <laughs> so and <laughs> and he'll dig up the he'll dig up the stash in the backyard or wherever I've got it hidden or you have it hidden, and. Uh, <laughs> Yep, and then I'll sit back and watch it all on Forensic Files. <laughs> nice. Bob. Bob will never do that. He's a nice guy. He is. He's smiling right now. He's too right smart now. for that. He's smiling right now. Bob is in the background. Oh, do we have a question for Bob in the background? Uh, I'm not sure. I do. Okay, go ahead and ask Bob a question. All right. Bob, what do you, what do you think of the afterlife? He wants to know, what do you think of the afterlife? Like, what's going to happen? I'm trying to get him over here in front of the microphone. It's, <laughs> it's, what's that song? There's a couple different, it, how about the afterlife? It's going to be a lot nicer than here. Okay. Now I can't hear any of that, actually. He said it's so. going to be a lot nicer than here, but see, Bob goes to church every Sunday. <laughs> well, then Bob might be interested to find out your idea of the afterlife, which is... <laughs> Oh, Lord. I'm not sure if you have a, a real idea of the afterlife, but what cracked me up today during the discussion was the fact that you said, if there is no God, right. people are going to be really pissed off when they get to heaven. Yeah, all the, all the Jesus people and the gluten-free people and the, you know, those people that are all into, uh, into the Lord and dedicating their life to the Lord here, if they get to heaven and there's no God, they're going to be disappointed. I know. I have no and expectations. I, I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven or hell. I don't. It don't know if there is a heaven or hell, or if there's a I recreation, a recreation, whatever, whatever the hell you. I'm call still it. not. I'm still convinced that you don't have any idea what heaven's about, too. Because if there is no God, there is no heaven, and there's nowhere for you to be upset about. Uh, but if thing. I got up there and there's people can't. You can't go up and be upset that there's no God because there's no heaven to go up and be upset about. Well, if I got up there and there was no God, it's like I wasn't expecting one anyway. So I wouldn't be all bummed <laughs> out. So where, where are you then? If there's no God, where are you going to? Well, there could be a heaven without a God. There's so many gods out there, right? Who says yeah, all right. that? I don't know. And there's got to be mail delivery and stuff like that. And if there's not, then you end up just in a ground or Bill's theory of that light that you walk to is actually you coming out of a vagina being reborn. Which I think is brilliant on I, Bill's part. I thought it was good, too. It's the spotlight on the, on the vagina. You're going towards the light. And, yeah. Yeah, you just come back out, and then you're in a whole different situation. And, it, um, and as you're going through, it wipes out all your previous memories, unless you're some kind of psychic weirdo pe person where you can... Say, I was the Queen of England back in 1582. Yeah, but none of that shit ever works the way it's supposed to either. Everybody comes back out stupid, mm -hmm. like a stupid baby. You can't do math. You don't know how to read. Yep. And none of that stuff. You can't come out. See, I was thinking that it'd be cool if you retained some of the knowledge that you had. Well, Maybe not even specific stuff, but you just inherently knew, like... For instance, instead of me getting beat up all the time when I was in elementary school, I would know that nobody knows how what the hell they're doing when they're trying to fight you, and they're just flailing their arms around until somebody luckily hits you in the nose. That if you knew how, if you just knew how to punch them straight in the face to start with, exactly, that, and yeah, and you had all of the grown-up man confidence, then you you could rule the world. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
Okay, so before you die, you need to start taking MMA training, and then hopefully you'll retain that through the afterlife. And you, yeah, you won't you get picked up. Yeah, you could do that. That would be a. I don't know how I'm going to do that because before I die, I'll be doing all that heroin that we talked oh, about. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because at some point you just give up. <laughs> you could do anything. Yep. Because as soon as whatever kind of cancer I'm going to get kicks in, because it's pretty much unavoidable now yeah. in anyone's life to not have cancer mm-hmm. because there's so many, everybody just gets it. Now it's just a given. So whatever kind that sets in, that's go time. Yeah, I had two people <laughs> tell me today that I should quit smoking. I don't know why. You might as well just enjoy it because you're gonna get. If you quit, you're gonna get like foot cancer. Yeah. If you. The one. The, it doesn't make any. The difference. one guy at work goes. Uh, well, has I'm surprised your doctor still hasn't gotten on you about that. And I've known this guy for 20 years. And uh, I said, well, my doctor. I think my doctor. My doctor moved. We talked about that a while ago, but I haven't been to the doctor in forever because I don't want to know what's wrong with me. <laughs> You're afraid to find out yep. that you got three weeks left. And I'm afraid of the signs <laughs> that might be in the doctor's office telling me not to be on my cell phone and chill. I'm, I, yeah, I don't, gonna I don't like Cancel them. your appointment if you're 15 minutes late and charge you a fee. <laughs> Fuckers. Fucking doctors. I got to switch doctors again. Everybody knows that, though. Oh, I had a Comcast phone call this week. You got a Comcast phone call? Okay. Yep, here's a random topic of the day. So, yeah, yep. they called me to tell me that they've got this new special going on for movie channel packages, and they wanted to discuss it with me. And I, I told them, well, I'm driving right now. I have you on speakerphone. You are aware that I signed a two-year contract with you guys, and I'm only, like, a year into it. And I also have the security package in every movie channel that you guys offer. So <laughs> unless you're going to be safe, basically, like you said, unless you're going to be knocking money off of my current bill I'm really not interested well I'm sorry you're driving mm-hmm. right now sir can I call you back at 5 I said no <laughs> only if you're knocking my bill off 40% or so yeah, if you want to take money for, off for my just bill just because you're nice fuckers because it's rare that they call you up and say you know what uh, I'm going to give you uh, a whole bunch of money back yeah I'm going to save you uh, money no Yep. they're not doing that the only time you're saving money, it's the whole thing, like when people go shopping and there's a sale and they come back and say how much money they saved when they bought all that shit. Oh, yeah. It's not as much as you'd save if you never went. Exactly. So and the same thing with the cable company. They're not going to call you up and tell you you're just going to save money now. They're going to get you to pay more to think you're saving money. Exactly. And um, most people that pay with credit card or debit cards... Spend, I don't remember what the percentage is, but I read something that was like 12% more if you're using your with card the, rather than cash. With the automatic payment, yeah. you mean? Yeah, because you're swiping. It's not, like a, it's not like you're feeling the money and it's tangible. It's yeah. just you're swiping. Yeah, because you're not seeing it go away. Right. So in other words, Lauren, you're not getting a brand new Jeep lease. <laughs> or a debit card. <laughs> well, she already has that. But she has a job now, so she can put her own money in. That's good. The job thing's a good thing. Both of my kids started working very young. Like, um, Mallory was working, I don't know how many nights a week when she was, like, 13 at a restaurant. Yeah. Hostessing and stuff like that. Lindsay would go and work at the restaurant. I feel... Yeah, they, they were. They both wanted to work, unlike their... Unlike me. I feel bad for the interns at work. Because they are getting a warped sense of what corporate life is really about. Are we going to hit the brakes? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just... Uh, coming to our company, our company is not like any other company out there. We're fun. We're creative. Um, we all we're, work... We're Google-ish. We all... Yeah, we've got the Googliness. <laughs> <laughs> One of the top places to work in Michigan. It's, um, it's always interesting going into work. And I'm yep. sure the structure of other companies, I could talk to Paul in the background, or, yeah, what do you call him, Paul from the Wonder Years. He works over at Chrysler. A lot. Yeah. It's a lot stricter and a lot more regimented and all that other bullshit. And the the whole have to be there on time and there's not flex time and everything else. But I'm pretty sure yep. that, uh, that it's going to give the interns a little bit of a warped sense of reality in the long run. 
Oh, they go to a different company, and it'll be like like a yeah. What you guys don't have vibe. Thirsty Thursdays? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, right. What do you mean there's no bocce ball tournament at lunchtime? You guys don't shoot darts <laughs> in the warehouse? What's up? You know. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It fosters a sense of creativity. I fully believe that too. Mm-hmm. It does feel different going to work with a, at a company like like well, ours. Well, you enjoy going to work. You know, you, yeah. you look forward to actually seeing the other coworkers you work with, and everyone has fun, but everyone gets their damn job done too. And, yeah, and we you don't have people breathing down your neck all the time. They they allow you to prosper on your own. And uh, that's that's a good way to do that. It's a great way to grow, and that's probably why they've grown so much in the past couple of years. Now we've got a new sponsor, because <laughs> <laughs> we're really selling everybody on that. Now it's all pretty much the truth. But you know, another piece of the truth I like is this shitty phone connection we have, because it's really hard for me to, to hear how drunk you are right now. No, I'm on beer number four. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that drunk. Exactly. <laughs> I just because we have a nice clear connection, I can hear every slurred word. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a new uh, new earbuds. These are the ones that. Yeah, uh, you might have somebody to, gave they, me because it's the really road. crackly. I used to be able to hear Bob in the background. Now I can't hear him at all. Now the cord's going. Oh well. Yeah. Yes, it's about that time. Yeah, it is. What do we call this episode? What did we talk about? Let's recap. Okay. We talked about dog farts. Yes. No, we talked about we talked about dogs not being able to smell or hear music. Lottery. Correctly. Talked about the lottery. We talked about um, Comcast. Yes, we talked about uh, uh, kids trying I to erased lease vehicles. all my show notes. <laughs> and don't eat at uh, Vino Vico Teco or whatever the hell it is in Royal Oak because they suck. All right, you know what? I'll give I'll give us one last topic so that we can title it a different way. Okay. This is what I was thinking about the other day. You know how some people might make. You remember the last episode when I talked about Down syndrome? Yeah. And I was saying something like, uh, "Oh, you know, Tony Downs. It doesn't mean he's got Down syndrome." And and then I made the joke that I think I have Down syndrome because I'm tired. You know that kind of shit like that. Mm-hmm. Not funny jokes. Making fun of the disabled. And you know, think about it. Why do we not make fun of the disabled? Is it to be nice or is it out of fear? It's to be politically correct. I think it's about fear. Okay. That you're afraid that if you make the joke about, like, the mentally disabled or if you make a joke about somebody who got their foot cut off or some, you know, it doesn't matter, like, anything like that. Not that you do make these jokes, but... Say you make an off-color joke about something, you're more afraid that karma's going to come back and put you in that situation. Ooh, so, like, yeah. if you make the joke, like Corey's haircut joke, where I said, what did you do? Did you just sit in the chair and ask for the Down syndrome? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it's a funny joke. Yeah. Part of you is afraid that you'll have a child with Down syndrome because you said that. Right, unless you so, got snipped. Yes. Well, there's the the point. The whole point of the topic is how long until you can stop worrying about these jokes. I think about, you, I think it's the same timeline as when you get old enough where you can just do whatever drugs you want because you don't right. give a fuck anymore about your body. It's just like I'm done. Right. Well, we've got two kids. We're not going to have any more kids. So am I safe now to make these jokes because I'm in the clear, or do I have to start worrying about grandchildren too when you make these jokes? Oh, fuck it. Make them. Yeah, but what happens if I make a joke and then I end up having, like, a Jewish grandkid or something? Oh, well, then you'll have somebody (laughs) with hurt feelings. Jewish grandkid, right? (laughs) Like, I'm sitting around making Jewish jokes all the time. No, I'm pretty sure I've offended a lot of people in my life. Did you hear the one about the two Jews that were beatboxing on America's Got Talent? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, LaShonda Raisin actually showed us a video today. Oh... (laughs) I didn't even know how to feel about that video. It was, I was not like, funny. Okay. It was, she, there was, she yeah, there was wasn't brilliant. really, there really wasn't any funny to it, and it was just two guys who were beatboxing well, but they were like yarmulke wearing Jewish guys that met in Israel, and I'm like thinking, where's the funny? Are we supposed to be laughing at them because they're Jewish? And she wants to be, no, I, she wants to be on the show too. Yeah, I. But then again, I'm not sure she was saying it was supposed to be funny. I think we were thinking it was supposed to be funny, and it wasn't. 
but you're right. Kind of like so maybe she's just showing us a cool beatbox video, <laughs> like her mom's underwear story. Oh, we'll save her mother's underwear for her guest appearance. See, you can't blow that there's up. A whole, now people will look forward to it. The thing is, there's a whole new dynamic now that Jerry has moved to Carpetland. Because now to see Jerry, I don't see him every day when we were sharing a desk and he was having to move and sit behind me on a, uh, on a crate <laughs> to work and do his job. Um, now right. he has a desk in Carpetland, which I've got to walk quite a way to get to you and I don't text yeah. you or call you and say hey let's go have a smoke or anything you're constantly in meetings now and doing paperwork and revising quotes and updating inventory and all that shit that right. I hate <laughs> right and, now, and it's quiet up there it's just quiet but now you're sitting by a whole group of people that I never really interacted with too much before and now I'm coming up there more and I'm having to interact with these people and it's yes. kind of weird. Well, they're they're not warehouse people. No. There's a difference between these people. But they don't get my sense of humor, I don't think. No, there's nothing wrong with anybody. They just live in different worlds. Exactly. Uh, up front, we'll talk about music. Or we'll talk about something that happened in a TV show. Movies or in the series back, to watch. In the back, we talk about Corey's horrible haircut. We talk about how many times someone can poop in one day. Yep. <laughs> we'll talk yeah. about <laughs> totally different. The wall d- is built for a reason to divide the office because some of the conversations. We'll talk about how <laughs> the little girl from Poltergeist and the girl from Escape from Witch Mountain are essentially the same person, <laughs> except for one of them died from shitting issues. <laughs> Bill told us that at lunch. <laughs> but yeah, I get the point. They're not the same kind of people. So up she there. backed herself up to the point where she died. I didn't know you can die from like not pooping. You'd think eventually it would Bill just come us. out, you know. Bill Christensen spelled correctly is a font of information. See, and he's the only one still listening right now because we are at the mark, brother. So, uh, so now we can. Now it comes to the end of the show, and we can safely. Label the show something about jokes about disabled people. If, and uh, if you want to call it that, there was so many other things that would be better to call it. But like what? I have no idea. You decide. No, I. No, I. The title wasn't something about jokes about day disabled people. It was. That's the idea of naming it. Naming it in the in something about this right. topic. Not naming it that name. Because I know we do something about head meat, yeah. so that's not what I meant. Okay. I meant something, Well, you know. surprise me. Yeah, I'll have to do that, because that way people will think that somebody made a disabled person joke and want to listen to it. Because even though everybody's against disabled people jokes... Cripples are funny. They all want to hear them. Yeah. Cripples are funny. You gotta... Ever, ever hand a retard an ice cream cone? It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I thought this would have happened earlier, but... Hey, guess what word I did not say this episode? Uh, do I need to guess? Because <laughs> no. if you say it, the drinking people in the drinking game are going to have to drink I'm if not, you say I'm not going to say it this episode. I swear I won't. You're not... Because we're almost done, and I didn't have to say it. Yep. We're almost done. It was. We should have been done right before you made the joke with the retard <laughs> word in there, too. Now you're going to have so, a, a I'm mentally sorry. disabled grandchild. Handicapped. No, I'm going to get in a head-on collision and be a uh, dumb idiot. And, yeah, they'll have to give me well, brain surgery. Well, you got to realize that we're, we're old and we grew up and everybody made jokes like that. And we all thought it was funny for some reason. But as you get older, you meet more and more people. Just like cancer, there's like, more and more people who end up being mentally disabled. It ends up being um, bullying at some point. Mentally challenged. But it gets more and more prevalent, and then it's more at home. Because how many kids did you know who were mentally challenged when you were young? Probably a handful that were at the school that you went right. to, right? And my curse is my kids are idiots. <laughs> so so that it's payback. That's my karma coming back to me, Jerry. So now you're saying that because you, <laughs> because you want to call your kids idiots, yeah. that you can say any kind of joke you want. Well, that's yeah, that's how I'm going to get out of that one. <laughs> you know, if anybody really listened to this show, we hear about all the shit you say so much. They don't. They don't listen this far. 
<laughs> no, we're at the end. We're safe. You can say anything you want to. <laughs> uh, okay, brother. Well, that was this week. It was this week, and everybody have yourselves a nice summery weekend, and we'll see you again next week for another episode of You Name It. Papa Wheelie, guys. <laughs>